Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to be doing the Tulip 2-Minute Tie-Dye Kit. I've been really curious about this kit. It says 2-Minute Tie-Dye. Well, heck, who doesn't want to do tie-dye in 2 minutes, right? So I picked it up at my local craft store, which is Joann's, and I'm not affiliated with Tulip or Joann's in any way, shape, or form. I bought this with my own money because I was really curious. So when you get the box, it says it comes with 21 pieces and it has in it two sets of gloves, two of these containers for putting into the microwave, four colors of dye and some rubber bands and then the instructions. And I really like this little kit. It really does come with everything you need to get started except for the t-shirts. So I chose to use two medium sized shirts, but when I was reading the instructions, it says for youth size or adult size. I can tell you that this is just not enough dye for adult size t-shirts. Um, I could barely make two shirts out of these dyes. So something to consider, you might wanna pick up more than one kit if you're gonna be doing adult size shirts. Okay. So I opened up the instructions and I read them thoroughly because that's really important. And so it tells you that you need to pre-wash your shirts and all of that good jazz. So I'm going to stop right here and we'll get into it as the tutorial keeps going. Down here towards the bottom, it talks about microwave wattage and it's looking for 750 or 1000 watts and it explains how if you open your door you can usually see a sticker. I didn't have that sticker on my microwave. Uh, the microwave I was using could easily be 40 years old and I even looked on the back and I couldn't see. So I just decided that I was gonna go in the middle of the road and follow those instructions and pretend like mine was 900 watts. These two shirts are Gildan brand. I got them from Jiffy.com. You can also find them at Walmart next to the tie-dye. So you need to start by pre-washing the shirts. And you wanna wash them on hot water. And since, you know, it's only a couple shirts, I'm setting it to a small load. And I made the error of using Synthropol for this video. Uh, if this is your first time making tie-dye, you're not going to have that. So just use your regular detergent or you can use Dawn dish soap. A lot of people use that. While the shirts are in the pre-wash cycle, you wanna go ahead and mix your dye. Now don't mix your dye if you don't plan on tie dyeing right away, but I suggest that you do this all in one step because your shirts have to be damp for this process. So just fill the bottles up with warm water up to the fill line. You want to make sure that all of your dye dissolves. Okay. 
So the wash cycle is over and what you want to do is go in and get your shirts while they're still damp and then take them over to your dye table. What you're seeing here is a full load of wash because I just recently got in an order and so I didn't want to be wasteful and only wash two shirts. So get them over to your dye table and then let's get started. It's really hot right now, so what I decided to do was to take one of the t-shirts and just stick it inside of its container to help keep it damp. For the first shirt, I'm choosing to go with my favorite thing, a spiral. For the majority of us that have been tie-dyeing for a while, we recommend that you turn the shirt inside out. The theory behind that is it's going to cut back on any speckling or spattering that might show up on the front side of the shirt. So if there's anything that's going to go wrong, it's on the inside. But to tell you the truth, it's dye. It's going to show up on inside, outside. It really doesn't matter. So you want to smooth out your shirt, and since we're doing a spiral for this one, you want to decide where you want the center of your spiral to be. Now for my spirals, I like to come down an inch or two below the underarm line. You don't really want the center of your spiral to be right on the belly button. It's just really not that aesthetically pleasing. And then you give it a pinch, and then just start spiraling it up. So while one hand is twisting, the other hand is pulling and wrapping the shirt around. And you just continue to do this until you have it all spiraled up. Now you also want to try to make sure that your pleats don't overlap each other. It just makes the dye go on a lot easier and smoother. Once the shirt is all spiraled up, it's time to secure it. And these rubber bands that come in the kit are some of my favorite rubber bands. They're just really nice and tight, but they're extremely tight. So you need to start by loosening them up by stretching them. If you don't, they're going to make your spiral taco up. And what I mean by that, it's going to like try to fold in on itself. You don't want that to happen. And then how to add the rubber bands to the shirt. You want to stretch them open and then slide them along the table and then release. Stretch it out and then slide along the table and then release. Notice all those loose tails. You want to tuck those in. So what I do is I just continue to spiral the shirt up. So I pull on the tail and I tuck it into the nearest rubber band. And I continue to do this until I have all of the shirt nice and tucked in. Thank you. 
Also, when tightening up my rubber bands, I try to make sure they intersect in the center of the spiral. Notice how one side of the spiral looks kind of messy, and then the other side of the spiral looks nice and flat. I like to add my die to the flat side first. The instructions say to vigorously shake your die for at least one minute. For this spiral, I'm going to show you how to make a rainbow using only three colors of dye, the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. And you want to start by using yellow and cover half of the shirt, making sure to cross through the center of the spiral. Make sure to save enough dye so that you can cover the other side. Next we're going to use the red dye and we're going to cover three more pieces of pie. So we're going to start by covering this first piece of pie red. Then we're going to go over top of one of the yellow pieces of pie and that's going to create orange and then one more of the white pieces of pie, which we're going to add blue to, and that's going to create purple. Lastly, we're going to use the blue. And so we're going to fill in this piece of the pie with the blue, and then we're going to go over top of the yellow, and we're going to create green, and then we're going to go over top of the red, and we're going to create purple. Now is a good time to wipe up any mess that you might have around your project and then go ahead and use some of the dye to touch up if you need to add a little bit more here or there. Now it's time to flip it over and do the same thing on the back side that you did on the front side.
this kit comes with a very small amount of dye, so you do have to be conscientious about how much you're using. I should also mention that when you're making spirals, you don't want to put a whole lot of dye down into the center of the spiral because if you overfill it with dye, it can turn into a really sort of a muddy color. So you know, you take your colors down towards the center, just a few drops is all it takes. So the instructions say to immediately place garment into tie-dye container. So put it inside the container and make sure you close it down tightly. Now we're going to go into the kitchen and put it in the microwave. The instructions say for an adult size shirt, if your microwave is 700 watts, do 3 minutes and 30 seconds. If it's at 1000 watts, do 2 minutes and 30 seconds. I do not know the wattage of this microwave, so I split the difference and I decided to go with 3 minutes. The instructions specifically say, stay with the microwave, don't walk away. If anything's going to go wrong, you need to be right there to handle the situation. The instructions say to wait 15 minutes before opening the lid. So I just closed the microwave door, set my timer on my phone for 15 minutes, I came back, and now we're going to rinse out the project. So I'll read what the instructions say. Rinse well with cold water until excess dye is removed. Place your tie-dye garment into a washing machine and add a small amount of laundry soap. Wash in warm water on a regular cycle and tumble dry. Wash and dry separately. So here we go. Let's rinse out our shirt. So far, I'm really loving the vibrancy of this shirt. It's really pretty.
Something that I get asked quite a bit is, can you reuse your rubber bands? And the answer is yes. Just give them a good rinse and then set them off to the side and once they're dry, you can reuse them. I've been rinsing for a couple minutes now and I'm really pleasantly surprised. The colors are so vibrant and everything looks really pretty. So we're done rinsing shirt number one and in the meantime of doing shirt number two, I'm going to prepare the washing machine. So I'm going to set it on a warm water cycle and it says to use regular detergent. I don't have that. And most everybody in all of the Facebook groups recommend using Dawn, which I do have that because I use it to wash dishes. So this is a tablespoon, and I'd say I used about a half a tablespoon in a small load of laundry. So here we go. Now we're gonna go do shirt number two. So for the second shirt, I decided to go with the bullseye pattern. Remember how I had set the shirt inside of the container to keep it moist? Well, now you wanna take it out and lay it flat on the table and smooth it out. Once you have it all smoothed out, you wanna just find where you want the center of your shirt to be and then just pick it straight up off the table and then using the rubber bands that came in the kit, tie it off very tight. So you might have to wrap the rubber bands around two or three times. That's going to create white lines that create the bullseye pattern. When adding your rubber bands, you want to make sure that you don't have a bunch of fabric in between the layers. Right there, there's um, some fabric that's all tucked up and sticking out. You don't want that because when you add your dye, you're not going to have a nice white line. These rubber bands are really tight.
Now we're ready to add the dye. And I decided that I was going to put down some paper towels this time, just to keep things clean and, you know, just protect the table so it's less messy. And the only color we have left in the kit is green. So here we go. Now that we have all the dye on the shirt, it's time to get it inside of the plastic container and take it to the microwave. This shirt was a little thick and the container didn't want to snap closed very tightly. So I decided to put some rubber bands around it just to make sure that it wouldn't pop open. Just like we did with the last shirt, I'm going to stick this in the microwave and I'm going to set the timer for three minutes. After the three minutes, I came back and I checked it. Everything looks good. So I set a timer on my phone for 15 minutes. I came back after the 15 minutes and now it's time for the rinse out. Like before, I rinse the shirt with cold water. I really wish these kits came with just a little more dye. This shirt could have used just, just a little bit more. So from here, we're going to take it to that already prepped washing machine.
Well, after the first cycle, everything looks pretty good. So I decided that I would do a second cycle using downy. I'm trying to use the things that people would have in their house for everyday washing. Because you know, if you're gonna make these shirts, you're gonna wash them a couple of times and then you're gonna wear them and introduce them into your regular wash cycle. So they're gonna get washed over and over again, right? So if I was doing regular laundry, this is what I would do. Well, here they are guys. Here's our two minute tie dye shirts. And that's sort of false advertising, right? Because it took three minutes in the microwave plus 15 minutes to cool down. So that's not really two minutes. However, it certainly is better than 24 hours. I do like the outcome. I think, you know, they're good looking shirts. Um, so let's talk about the rainbow. So if you remember, I only used three colors to create this and we have all six colors of the rainbow. So I think that's really cool. You know, keep that in mind when you get yourself a kit that you can do far more by mixing the colors. I do love this rainbow. It's bright and cheerful, but compared to Dharma's Procyon dyes, this shirt does already have sort of a worn out look right from Jump Street. So, you know, these kits are a great place to start. And then you wanna move up if, you know, and get uh, the Dharma Procyon dyes or the other Procyon dyes from other companies, you know, because they really are better. And then this green, you know, I like this shirt, but they don't give you enough dye to create adult size shirts. So really this kit would have been perfect to just make one shirt and use all four colors. But overall, I give this two thumbs up. You know, Tulip does make a great product. So what do you guys think of these shirts? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all so you can get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.